Okay, here is what I need you to do as soon as possible. So you can let me know if you're having any issues with your computer. And that is to try to knit the empty skeleton for homework one. So I'm gonna walk through this. I know we did this in class yesterday, but I'm gonna do it step-by-step step so you have a recording. So I'm on our Canvas class page and I am gonna come over to the left-hand margin and I'm gonna come down to modules because I know under modules, all the material is sorted by chapter and unit. So I'm coming down to the unit on exploratory data analysis, homework one, there's the PDF for the textbook, the YouTube for the lecture material and homework one assignment. Under that is the optional Q and A if you have additional questions about anything on homework one. So I'm gonna click on homework one. Here's our homework one. Again, it has a link to the PDF of the chapter and a, the YouTube lecture for watching on your own. Remember, we're not covering chapter one in class. It is all to be done on your own, except for the last little bit of the homework assignment in R. So to do the assignment, if you scroll down, it's gonna have these three blocks that are thinking, it is going to bring up your assignments. And all of it is completed in Canvas, except for the last item. And that's true for every chapter. So item one is some matching for definitions and types of variables, types of scales. Item two, I believe is more matching. Three is with summation notation. Four is with the um, rounding. But item number five is where you will upload a PDF. Here we go. So you need to upload a file. So what file is this? How do you make this file? That's what we're gonna start right here. So. There is at the top of your assignment here, and it will be much the same way with every chapter homework. So every homework one through homework 20, there'll be, the it'll tell you the textbook chapter, and I will have the scanned copies of the first four chapters. After that, you have to get the textbook, electronic on the library's website or paper copy. And if there is um, pre-recorded lecture material, it'll be there, and then I have, there will always be downloads and it, there will always be this Excel data set. It is there for every chapter. So you can download it new each time or you can just have one copy. As long as each chapter's RMD notebook file is stored in the same place where there's at least one copy of Eno's data set. So I am on a, a PC, I'm on Windows and I am using Chrome for my operating system. So when I click on Excel, it's going to start downloading the Excel file. I'm going to click on RMD. It's going to do the same thing too. And because I'm using Chrome, they show up in the bottom of my window. And if you're using a different browser or you're on a Mac, it might look differently, but you're going to click on those links to download those two files. You need to have the Excel data set that is always Eno's data set in Excel format. And the RMD code file is different each chapter. And when you download it, you'll see a different name each chapter. So if I come into my downloads folder, looks like I haven't quite got the Excel file. Is it not gonna? There it goes, okay. So if I look into my downloads folder, I clicked on the word Excel and it gave me this data set, Eno data set dash one, XLS and the RMD file is chapter one assignment R skeleton dash one. So now if I double click on the RMD file, it should open it in R studio. If it's the first time you're opening it, you might have to tell it which program to open it with. And often if you double click on it, it will, at least in windows, it'll ask you which, um, program you want to open it with. Now I had something else up here before, so I'm going to just close this. Um, close project. Okay, so I'm going to try that again. Don't worry about what mine looked like. It was it's updating our website. Okay. So again, double clicking to open the chapter one assignment R skeleton in our studio. And I call it a skeleton because most of the work is done. 
the all the section headings, subsection headings. I've typed out all the questions. Uh, I've got the YAML header done. Most of it's done, but it's a skeleton because you need to put the meat on the bone. So you're going to be typing stuff in. But today, I want to make sure that you, with this first video, you at least try to knit the blank skeleton just to check that everything runs in your computer. So I've downloaded this and you can see, I once you open an RMD, a script or a uh, code file, you get all four components of the window. We've got, in my arrangement, I've got in the top left-hand corner, I have my R notebook. In the top right-hand corner, I've got my console and it's got some other tabs. Below that, I have files, plots, packages, helps, and viewer, the mini tab window. And then on the other left lower corner, I have this environment history connections tutorials. Now, right now I don't need to look at that. So I'm going to shrink it down. There's these buttons that are a big box and a little box. If you hit the little box, it'll shrink that down. It just gives you more real estate to see your notebook or your code. Now, just to hit some things here, we have, you always have to have a title. The YAML header has these three dashes to start and three dashes to end it. Everything between those dashes is YAML header information. And there are two things that must be there. You must have a title and you must say what kind of output you want to create. The rest of this stuff is, um, I've already filled it out for you. We're just going to go training wheel style. We're just jumping in the deep end, feet first. I'm going to teach you how to swim by jumping in the deep end. So I've already filled out most of the stuff. You need to replace where it says your name with your actually name. And at the date, you wanna change that to the date that we have. And you could put in January 26th if you want, however you wanna type the date. Um, leave the rest the way it is. Again, this engine just makes it work. It has to do with LaTeX. TOC means table of contents. So yes, we want to make a table of contents and we only want it two levels deep. So that's section and subsection, but we do not want to number those sections. That's what that's saying. So the rest of this, we are not going to touch it right now. We're just trying it out to make sure everything works. Now this file is an RMD file for R markdown. This is a lot easier to deal with the only LaTeX code you need to know is clear page with this slashy. And this slash in front of it is the one that's on top of your escape key, not the one that's next to your shift key. That just does a page break. That's all the LaTeX code you need to know. And other than that, we're going to, this simplifies things 100%. So the whole process is, is you're writing in an RMD notebook. When we hit the knit button, it's going to change from, Using the knitter package, it's going to go from R markdown to regular markdown. Then using the Pandocs package, it's going to go from regular markdown to tech, T-E-X. And then it's going to pass it over to MIT tech or Mac tech to go from a tech file to a PDF. And that final PDF is what you enter or you upload on the homework assignment. Now, we're going to knit it right now and make a PDF this PDF is going to be mostly blank. It's the skeleton format. So this is, we're going to knit it right now to create a PDF, but don't upload that one yet. We're just checking that everything runs fine. Then after this, I'm going to record another video tonight that's going to show you how to fill in the skeleton and knit it again to produce the file, final PDF that you will upload on the assignments. Clear as mud. I know this is a fire hose to your face. And that's, we're just going to have to stand in uncomfortable places for a moment. We're just going to doggy paddle and keep our head above water. And before you know it, you'll be swimming. Um, I've taught this class for six years. I've taught hundreds of people. And it really, there's no way to ease into it. You can put your little toe in and stand in the shallow end. But really, we just have to dive in. So we're gonna, I've already written all this stuff in. We are gonna go ahead and knit it. Now, I know that there was one question yesterday. Someone said, how do I see this table of contents? It's the outline button. You can see my mouse moving around right above it. And that will shrink away your table of contents or bring it out, this little outline. And you can shrink it over, slide it by um, hovering your mouse over the division line until you get that mover icon. So again, I'm gonna to try to knit it, make sure everything's okay. Now I'm gonna slide this over. So right now we have our console 
in this upper right hand corner and it's telling us what version of R we have and some copyright and warranty information and something about citations and demos. So when I hit the knit button over on my RMD, it's gonna flip from the console tab into an R markdown tab. So here we go. I'm just gonna click on where it says knit with the yarn ball. And we'll watch, see now it's created an R markdown tab. And what it's doing is in the background, it's opening that R markdown file and it's processing the file. And then it has output a, from a regular, from an R markdown to a knit.md markdown file. Then it's gonna use, it says here in this, um, all this white writing here, if you take the time to look at it, um, it says that it's going to um, convert it to a tech file. So it's using Pandocs, it's the package, to convert it to tech, T-E-X. And if you look in your file folder, go to working directory, you'll, oh, it's not gonna show it here, but it will show um, the different file, intermediate files being created. Let's see if I open up. So here I'm working in the downloads folder. I don't suggest this, but so I have my RMD file I started with in my Excel file and it's created a copy of the skeleton and it has these intermediate files. And then if it's successful making the PDF, it will delete all those intermediate files. So I'm left in my folder, the R markdown I started with, the Excel file we're gonna read in and import, and then this PDF, which is the knitted version of the R markdown file. If you're on Windows and you're successful, that PDF will automatically be opened with this viewer. And it's this yellow PDF, I forget the name of it. Uh, yeah, Sumatra, Sumatra, Sumatra PDF viewer. This PDF viewer got downloaded with the MIC Tech installation and let it be. If you open your PDF with Adobe or Microsoft Edge or another PDF viewer, you won't be able to knit again, well, as long as it's open because it won't let it override the file that's open. But with this PDF viewer, if I was to knit again, it can override it. On Macintosh computers, um, it uses a different, Mac Tech uses a different viewer. And I think you have to close the PDF every time you want to re-knit. But if you get a knitted file, you know it's done correctly. Now I changed in my R markdown, I put in my name and I changed the date. And now you'll see in my knitted PDF, that I have my name and the date that I've written in. And it's created this table of contents and it's got all the instructions for this part of the homework here. And you'll notice some are bold, some are italic, some are a different kind of font that's um, code font. And there's a lot of stuff on here. And the next video will walk you through what to do with this. Now, I'm pointing out again, wherever your R markdown file lives on your computer, whatever folder it's in or your desktop or your downloads, please make another folder that you can find wherever the R markdown is file is. That's where you need to put your Excel data set or SPSS or SAS. For this homework, we're using an Excel file though. They have to live together somewhere on your computer. Wherever they are living together, that's where the PDF will be put. The PDF will be the same name as the R markdown file, just it'll say .pdf instead of .rmd. And then the PDF again is what you upload after you've put the meat on the bones of the skeleton. So let me know on the Q&A discussion board or a direct email it's to sarah.schwartz at usu.edu if you struggle with or have any computer hiccups in that process. And um, I'll see you on the next video. I sound like a silly YouTuber. <laughs>